started. Okay, well, a very warm welcome to everyone tuning in to us here at Southern Regional College. Uh, you're very welcome to our second session as part of Global Entrepreneurship Week. And we're doing this session in line with Newey Morning Down Council. Um, so really this session is, we want to share with you what we do at Southern Regional College and how we can help you in your business. And we have uh, a number of different guests speaking today. Uh, we have Giuseppe from uh, La Dolce Vita. We have Patricia from Newry Moore and Down Council. Two of my colleagues, uh, Tracy and Fiona from uh, Southern Regional College. And then we have Sarah from Anne's Home Care. And just to go through what we're going to do this afternoon, um, shortly, my colleague Margaret is going to play you two short case studies. And those are little case study videos of clients that we've been working with. And then we're going to uh, revert back to our, our speakers and we're going to really just a bit of discussion of how SRC has helped. And I'll try and interject and we're looking at this as part of Global Entrepreneurship Week. So, you know, um, in terms of how has SRC helped you to innovate and uh, what opportunities are there there for businesses? And both my colleague Tracy and Fiona will be able to answer that. So that's really a format. We don't have a, a, a fancy PowerPoint presentation for you. It's a little bit of discussion. So first things first, you are very, very welcome. Um, in terms of uh, how this is going to work, you will all be automatically on mute. And then our speakers will come off their microphone when we ask them to speak. There will be an opportunity to submit some questions. So in the Teams format, there's a, a Q&A, there's a chat window and then there's a Q&A where you can submit some questions. I know um, from chatting to my colleague Ashley that some of you already have done, I may I say uh, thank you for that. So what we will endeavour, we're not going to interrogate our speakers, <laughs> but we're going to try and get a bit of discussion uh, around the questions because they're coming from you. So in the course of the next 30 minutes or so, if something pops into your mind, Please submit a question and then Ashley will bring that forward and we'll discuss that. OK, well, then now to today and uh, I've been talking enough, so I'm going to ask all our speakers to individually. I'll call your name out and then you just quickly introduce yourself and then we're going to play a couple of case studies. So maybe if I could start with my colleague Tracy. Tracy, just give us a little introduction there. Hi, Karen. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar today. I'm Tracy Rice. I am the head of business engagement here at the college, and I'm just going to speak to you today about the work of the business support team, how we've been supporting businesses and indeed how we've been supporting them through COVID. Great. OK. And Sarah, could I ask you to say a few words in of introduction, please? Sure, yep. Yeah. My name is Sarah McQuillan. Um, I'm registered manager for Anne's Home Care. We're one of the largest providers of domiciliary care um, in, in the Northern Ireland. Um, and I'm here today to let you know the great work that Southern Region College have been doing with us and our carers. Great. And Giuseppe, if you'd introduce yourself, please. My name is Giuseppe Filoni. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm the owner of La Dolce Vita, myself and my wife, for over the past 20 years. I'm going to speak about how SRC have had our company over the last 10 years, but uh, specifically in the last few months, how they really had us in developing products for retail sale. Great, thanks Giuseppe. And Patricia, would you like to introduce yourself there? Certainly, Karen. Um, I'm Patricia McPolan. I'm the Business Intelligence Officer with Newry and Warren Council. So I'll be um, touching today on the skills strategy um, that the Council have and the programmes that we have available as well. Great, thanks Patricia. And Fiona, would you like to introduce yourself there? Yes, thanks Kieran. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Fiona Bradley and I'm the Assistant Director here for Further Education and Training. So I'm responsible for all of the training and the apprenticeships and the higher level apprenticeships that happen at the college. Great, thanks very much everyone. Margaret, could I ask you to run the two videos there please, if you would? study in the higher level apprenticeship in accountancy. I attend the Southern Regional College here in Newry one day per week and I am currently training the remaining four days with SM Vinton Company in Banbridge. The top benefit I believe of doing the apprenticeship as opposed to the typical university route would definitely be the real life experience that you get in the office which wouldn't be gained through the degree route. 
the other benefit of doing it is um, the fact you earn as you learn. Uh, there's no student debt, no loans to worry about and you're earning a salary. My friends look upon the apprenticeship as a great alternative to university. Whilst they're at university during the week, they're coming home at the weekends having to work to afford the university life, whereas with the apprenticeship you get to earn as you learn, so the weekend is necessarily your own. Traditionally, our ancestors voyaged the beach here for seaweed and uh, they would have used that for a cure and remedy to coughs and flus. It was full of vitamins and trace minerals. So we wanted to bring some of that tradition back to life. We set up our seaweed company called Crawford Rock Seaweed Company. We needed help with our nutritional values, our labelling. We needed help to scale up the product, help to test the market. So we needed an expert in that field. We did the Innovate Us programme, which is a one-to-one -one mentoring programme uh, funded by the Department for the Economy. For Crawford Rock, we took them through the MPD process. I would come up to Michelle or she would come down to the college and I would train her up in all the skills she would need to take a product from concept to launch the whole way through the new product development process. Okay there, thanks. Thanks, Margaret, appreciate that. So there we had two brief case studies I suppose kind of in the role of the higher level apprenticeship and uh, Fiona, I think so we'll, we'll chat about it a bit, a bit later. And then um, my colleague Emma, they're working with um, uh, Crawford Rock. Very, very interesting uh, what they've been, what Emma's been able to do with that company uh, around new product development. So I, I guess maybe Tracy, could I kick off with you? If you could give us an indication, the title of today's session is um, <clears throat> what we do and how we can help you. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about uh, your role and what we do in terms of business support, please. Yes, thank you, Kieran. Well, I suppose the team here in, in the college work with a range of businesses of all sizes. I suppose to put into context today and the, the Entrep Global Entrepreneurship Week and the focus on innovation and business startup, um, we very much have a team focused on supporting small businesses with that innovation theme. How do they embrace innovation? How do they look at how they can develop new products, come up with new ideas and new services, improve processes in their business and take their business to the next level. So we have a team of specialists and Kieran, you're one of our specialists in the team in tourism and digital technologies. Um, and we really go in and, and assess what the need is or help the business to develop that idea and take them through the processes to develop the product, the service and to bring it to market. Um, and we have funding to do that. As in the video, Emma was working with a company one to one, taking them through all the various steps. So it's not just a case of going in and doing something for a business and stepping away. It's going in and showing them, taking them through all of those steps, giving them the skills so they can continue to innovate, continue to develop what they need to do in their business. And indeed, very rarely is it a one off intervention. We may do two or three projects with a, with a company and take them through the various different stages. It might be all together or it could be after a year's time when they're ready to move to the next stage. So it's a very flexible model. And fortunately, there is funding from the department to enable us to provide that support to businesses. And then on the other side, we also have upskilling programmes for companies. Um, I know Patricia is going to talk about the skills strategy and the, and the council has launched their new economic development strategy and we're very much working in partnership with them on that. But the whole skills side, you know, businesses big and small continuously need to bring new skills into their business to upskill their staff, reskill their staff. And I know Anne's Home Care and, and the Dodge Avila, you've both been involved in those skills programmes as well. Um, mm -hmm. Anything from level two right up to level five or six, it's um, there's a range of programmes. There'll be leadership and management, digital technologies, health and social care, electrical training. It's a re broad range, whatever companies need. And through COVID, the department has funded this training 100% for businesses who have less than 250 staff. Prior to COVID, it was 75% funded. So now, fortunately, that is now 100% funded. So it's a great opportunity for businesses to engage and to upskill their staff, to look ahead, even in a post-COVID world, what they need to do, how they need, what skills they need to bring into their business. Um, and, and there's opportunities to do that. Um, and in addition to that, then we also have, um, we've been delivering, I suppose, a series of webinars here and going back to the earlier parts of COVID, when we all had to very quickly adapt to working from home, offering our services, we had a, there was just a complete stop to all our face-to-face -face delivery to businesses, and we had to move to an online and remote 
version of that, which was challenging for everyone, but we've navigated our way through it. We've reached out, um, I suppose, to reassure businesses that we are here. We're able to support them on those webinars. And indeed, today's event is a way of reaching out. We can't bring people in. We can't you know, um, talk to them face to face in a, in a live event scenario at the moment. But these webinars are a great opportunity to do that. And indeed, we've done this morning and how to um, move your business into online, online shopping, create an e-commerce store. Um, and we even had sessions on food. Our food specialists have, have worked with some of the hospitality businesses how do you move your hospitality business into a, you know, take away, make it at home kit, how you mm -hmm. diversify your business. So all of those supports are available. Yeah, I mean, the, taking from that for everyone, listen, I, I think what, what I and I, I'm on the, involved as part of the team as well, Tracy, I mean, is I think the key message here, we can help, we're a contact point, first of all, we can help in under a number of different interventions. Um, including the latter part you just talked about the webinars there, but right across the skills interventions. And I think what I take from what you've just said, and we'll hear more about, is this notion of um, relationship building, yeah. which is which is really, really critical. And I think that's what the different funds have enabled us as a college, as a community college, to that's be right. able to yeah. do. Um, yes. I, I think that's we'll probably be about to hear some of that relationship building <laughs> that's going on for more than just three months to six months. Um, so it, it would appear then, Tracy, that there's a lot really of support at the moment for businesses. There is indeed. And just to add to that, Kieran, there's also support for individuals. There may be people out there who are about to lose their job or become redundant or have their job, their hours significantly reduced. And there's more skills intervention support from the department to upskill people or train them up for possibly new roles in the future. Um, and we're also offering short courses on that at the moment. OK, Tracy, we will come back to you because I can see already we have a few questions, so we'll come back. Sarah, could, could, could I turn to you, Sarah, um, in your role at Anne's Home Care? Would, could you enlighten us a bit of, first of all, how SRC has been working with you? And um, I suppose give us a give us an idea uh, of, I'm sure it's very busy at the moment, but yeah. give us an idea of maybe part of your growth plan of where you're going. Sure. Um, well, you know, Southern Regional College has been immensely supportive um, to us as an organisation and in the, it's over five years we've been working with the college and in that time they've helped us to upskill over 200 staff and we actually have some stories where we've had someone come on board as a care assistant and Southern Regional College have helped us through level two and level three with that person and gone on to level five and they've now progressed to managers. So um, that's a success story in itself. And throughout this journey, we've been able to keep in contact with Margaret, get feedback from the tutors. Um, we, we find them to be immensely supportive, um, uh, you know, especially in times like this, um, when it's so important that our, our staff are skilled um, in infection control and, and all the critical things that they need to be. The college has been there with us every step of the way and have been extremely flexible to the needs of our, our work patterns. We work shifts, all our staff work shifts and the college has been able to work around that and provide workable solutions for everybody. It's great. Couldn't re recommend them enough. OK, so I mean, I, I've taken away from that, that that assistance, the flexibility of that, the ongoing support. No doubt that's been a blended model now over the last six months. It um, has, yeah. And also I take uh, the importance, I think you had something very important there about progression, about coming from a a level two and, and being with the college all the way up to level five across yeah. a range of different uh, interventions. So where's your company going? You know, and what's the what's the next two or three years got for your company? Well, it's an ever changing model. Um, we're growing into different trusts. We were primarily in the Southern Trust. We've expanded into the Northern and Belfast Trust, um, mm -hmm. but we've kept our engagement with the Southern Trust, believe it or, or with the Southern Regional College throughout this expansion because we've even had um, uh, carers and team leaders from other health trusts come down to Southern Regional College, even though there are other colleges, because we've built that relationship up with the Southern Regional College. We've had train the trainer and we've had management programs. So where possible, we hope to expand into health trusts. Um, but we have found that the Southern Regional College are uh, we can trust them. Um, we are confident in the quality of the courses they're delivering. So we hope that they will come hand in hand with us through our expansion project over the coming years. OK, OK, thank you for that, Patricia. Uh, thanks very much. That's a uh, um, you know, 
Uh, interesting journey. I know that your company has been on. You really have expanded, and you, you, you're very busy at the moment. Um, Giuseppe, if I could bring you in at this stage, um, tell us a little bit about how Southern Regional College has helped your business, please. Well, we've been fortunate enough that uh, our office is just up the street from the SRC in Patrick Street in Uri. So there's been a relationship there now for well over ten years. And uh, again, initially it was upskilling staff and. And that sort of stuff um, with food safety, etc., level two and level three. Um, but about six years ago, we first engaged with Brenda Callaghan, and we were trying to introduce like a healthier sort of option. Obviously, we are had food takeaway, and uh, there's always people looking for a healthier alternative. So uh, Brenda came on board there and helped us. And basically, it was all new to us. I never studied this formally myself, so uh, we had to have somebody. And she has a great background from. Um, within the food manufacturing industry. So she kind of brought that to the table for us and then uh, we then developed those products for the menu. And recently we've moved out to our new premises out in Camley here and uh, our long-term plan was to launch some products for retail and also to launch some products wholesale into other food restaurants and takeaways etc. So we had some of the groundwork done uh, when it comes to our nutritional inf information on that. But um, it's one of those things we kind of had in the long finger. We had to prioritise things and our own business was our priority. So the retail sector was kind of something we were, we were kind of towards and uh, Brenda had this as well when we had to apply for an EU number. Which mm -hmm. was it was very challenging. It was a big step up for us. Maybe explain to anyone listening here, if you wouldn't mind, Giuseppe, what's an EU number? It's a number that a food manufacturer has to have legally to sell food within the EU. I know the whole Brexit thing's coming now, but still, we'll have to have that number. And um, even though I was selling, or I wasn't selling, we were just supplying from our prep centre into our outlets. The, the gay lane stated that, no, we're our business is considered a food manufacturing business, which was was great because it got us to a level. And um, I, we just got that approval actually the second week of the lockdown, so it all kind of it all kind of worked out lucky for us, you know. And uh, but then when COVID kicked in, we we had to shut the doors and our four outlets. So it means it was zero cash coming through the doors, and we really had to think on our feet. And uh, hence that's where the 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 kits and the retail sauces came into the So floor. just for clarity in case some people listening to this don't know about the kits, tell us a little bit about exactly what they are. Well, we launched this product. It's uh, a DIY at home, a pizza kit. Yep. And in that pizza kit, can you see it there? Um, yeah, yeah, you're allowed and we can see it good. There's um, dough balls, there's pizza sauce and there's cheese and there's semolina as well. So, uh, we kind of were trying with the idea before the lockdown happened, knowing that trade was starting to slow down, and we kind of were trying to come up with something that we could we could basically utilize our own products for that. And a supermarket approached us and asked us would we do it, and the thing just snowballed from there. And then, so we were putting them in. It was kind of rough and ready, but we did have our EU number, we did have our nutritional information done. Okay, the labels. I suppose what I'm getting to there, that was a critical intervention in with Brenda's support that yeah. enabled you to do that. Yeah, because we were just kind of at a point was, how do we get our products that we have into supermarkets? We've never done it before. We were kind of planning it in the long term, but now it was like, right, we have to get these things into the shops ASAP. SAP. So, uh, so Brenda was there and she kind of went through all the all the nutritional information and our sauce bottles, all the all that detail you see. You're that. making us hungry. I haven't had my lunch yet. We've never done that before, so Brenda guided us through that. And there was other there was other fields as well that we weren't too sure who who to approach or what way we would go about it. So Brenda was there and, and she was able to guide us or steer us in different directions on other people to reach out for for support. So our support and we have a product development officer and the support she provides to him is um and the company's on the, you're on a growth, forgive the pun here, but you're on a growth curve then. Yeah, well, yes, it, it, it didn't look too good in week one of lockdown, but week three then, um, 
at that point we can see light at the end of the tunnel and since then we've been so we've opened up our takeaways our restaurants closed because of the restrictions but uh we are we're we're behind this all the way now because we see there's an all market there for us so yeah so well listen giuseppe continued success with that and it's been great for southern region college to to support you and uh, both brenda and emma both my colleagues and and uh, food innovation, um, they do many untold stories. So it's lovely to lovely to hear that as feedback. As feedback. Um, so, so thanks for that, Patricia. Could I come to you? Uh, I, I do know that the the, the Newry Morning Down District Council have launched a new uh, economic strategy, and I know our chief executive was at that last week. And certainly, we've been a partner with the council in in looking at the regional economy and the future of it. And as as my colleague uh, Tracy has been involved with that as well. Um, Tell us a little bit about, about what the council is planning to do in terms of strategy for skills and innovation and entrepreneurship. Yeah, um, well, the the um, Regeneration Economic Development Strategy um, launched just last week has a strategic theme within that to improve employability and skills, improve employability and skills. Um, both really are interlinked. Um, they're integral really to, um, as opposed to productivity and the likes of innovation, um, as Giuseppe had mentioned. Um, and really competitiveness of our um, businesses throughout the district. So to ensure that we have an uh, um, employable workforce, we really need to work to get um, people upskilled and to get them reskilled, uh, maybe into other um, employment. And I suppose to underpin that ethos of lifelong learning, um, Newry Morn Council, we will be working in partnership with other organisations, including the regional colleges and yourselves at SRC, to look at alternative pathways um, and really to, to upskill um, and to reskill our individuals. Um, there's going to be diverse needs, um, certainly after COVID, after Brexit um, and beyond that. Um, so we really need to be looking and working alongside the local businesses in the district to make sure that we have the, the workforce available. Um, to yeah. be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's critical. I mean, um, certainly all the agencies, both through a number of different interventions, and uh, you need to work in collaboration. And I think that's really starting to come to the fore now and has Absolutely. been. And uh, certainly, well, the economy is demanding it, businesses are demanding it. And, you know, uh, again, <clears throat> two of the regional colleges in your district, we have been working together in the past and will continue to do so through a number of different interventions. Uh, so I think that's really, really relevant, but it's great to hear and it's great to hear that this has all been communicated in, in, in collaboration, which is really, really important. You know, Absolutely. we can't just work out on our own. So that, that's really, really great to hear that the, the council is behind. And no doubt there's very, very real challenges, obviously, with our, the pandemic that we're that we've been facing and the repercussions of that. But also prior to that, and we were really going to very, very soon face a, a new trading uh, regime for all of us with, with uh, Brexit and what's that what's going to unfold. So agencies working together and support being available for businesses is, is absolutely critical that they feel that there's somewhere they, to go and, and, and ask for help. Um, Patricia, no, no doubt we'll have a few questions coming in uh, towards the end of the session, so we sure. will come back to you. At yeah. this point, I'd like to chat to Fiona, if you're there, Fiona, and I'm not too sure if we're able to see your video, but even Fiona, if you can hear us okay. Um, Fiona, uh, for, from your end of it in the college, could you tell us a little bit about the uh, support that, that uh, SRC has been offering both to businesses and, and to individuals, please? Okay, Kieran. Um, hopefully, hopefully the sound is okay. Um, we can hear you. Fine, few, Fiona. Yeah, I had a few that. technical hitches earlier. That's okay. Um, right. Okay. Well, look. Basically, just to give um the 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 business community some information about the apprenticeships that we offer here in the college, and uh, really, you know, apprenticeships for us as a college are really really important. Not only you know to maintain you know the talent pipeline for employers, but also to provide you know, a mechanism for the wider community to develop skills they need to actually ac access better employment opportunities. So for us, probably, you know, um, up until the last six, six years, our focus was very much at level two and level three. And then over the last six years, we've started to grow into the whole higher level apprenticeship space. And um, and that's something we are continuously growing. So just to give you, a, you know, an idea of the scale of numbers that we would have, at level two, we would have 201 enrolments at, at level two apprentices. 
At level three, we would have 464 and at level five, we have about 186. So in total, on an annual basis, we're averaging in and around 850, 900 enrolments right. for apprenticeships right across the provision. Wow. And just to, just to explain that they obviously span across 27 programmes at level two and three. Yep. And then a further eight programmes at our higher level apprenticeship programme. OK. OK. We're working with 619 employers um, to deliver our training for success apprenticeship and higher level apprenticeship provision. And 63% of the jobs offered this year for our new higher level apprentice starts are actually all new employers. So we're always looking for new employers and new opportunities to develop new curriculum. Yeah, and you're working very closely, there, Fiona, with our business support, you're working in tandem there for delivery of those higher level apprenticeships and also the apprenticeship model, the, the you know, level two, level one, level two, level three apprenticeships as well. We are indeed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just to, purely on, on some of the things that you were sharing with us there, Fiona, I mean, 850 to 900 apprentices, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Wow. I mean, you know, that that's 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 very very um, considerable, and six hundred and nineteen, so over six hundred employers, uh, and sixty three percent. You were saying there are new. So I mean, I, I know prior to what happened in the last six months, and I certainly know as a college and one of the six colleges, there's been a real focus on this higher level apprenticeship model, and we've been very successful with that. And obviously. But what, what's happened, some businesses have had difficulty in taking higher level apprenticeships on. But maybe if you could, could you give us a wee flavour just of some of the types of higher level apprenticeship there and maybe what's coming down the track? Yes, I, I can. I can indeed. And I suppose, Karen, it's really important to say that, you know, for us, uh, ensuring that our curriculum offer meets the emerging demands from industry is really, really important. You know, um, there's no point in us developing, you know, curriculum if it's not meeting the, the wider needs of the employers that are out there. So I know in 1920, we have been very actively involved with the development of the new engineering apprenticeship that yeah. came to the fore. And that was as a result of an employer forum. And um, we developed that new engineering apprenticeship um, at, at level three. And um, really then uh, some of the other developments have been mainly around the whole um, level five space, which is the higher level apprenticeship portfolio. So um, to give you an idea, I mean, our higher level apprenticeship provision in September 2016, we had 38 new job roles. In this year, even, even taking into consideration, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, we're averaging around 93, 95 new job roles. So that is huge annually, you know, for us to obviously be to be creating those job roles in the wider economy. Yeah, yeah. A lot of our developments are very much focused in STEM areas. And, um, you know, in, in this academic year for 2021, we've introduced three new higher level apprenticeship routes mm -hmm. and they are digital construction, um, digital marketing, advertising and communication and hospitality and tourism with specialisms. And what I can say is over the next two to five years, we are investing extensively in widening our higher level apprenticeship offer. And we're looking at top ups for level six. And we're currently exploring new areas. Um, we're looking at product design and manufacturing, automotive and technical management, um, fintech, computing, data analytics and some nursing healthcare operatives. So it's definitely a huge priority for us at the moment. OK, I mean, there's a lot again, as we were chatting with Tracy there, there's a there seems to be a lot going on, um, certainly in terms of both the higher level apprenticeship and the ordinary ordinary apprenticeships. Um, I'm waiting for some of the questions to come to the fore here. Um, I'm unable to see them at the moment. Maybe I'm going to ask my colleagues, but I'm going to just share one out that Sarah has here for the panel. And uh, uh, I have a small local RMA business and we need help with marketing and business introduction methods. Are there students? And this is perhaps to Tracy or to Fiona, so I'm not just sure yet. Are there students available for workplace studies in marketing? And are the mentoring opportunities available to help my business meet with other local businesses? So let's take the first part of that. Are there students available to help with marketing? Okay. Yes, Karen. If, if I could just come in there. Obviously, um, uh, you'll have heard me say earlier that we've just launched the new higher level apprenticeship in digital marketing, advertising and communication. We commenced the programme in January uh, 2020 with a very small cohort and um, uh, we obviously have brought on a new cohort for um, September. Now, um, whilst some of those, the, the students that are a higher level apprenticeship, um, they're actually employed for an employer. We do have a part time route 
And uh, my understanding is we have about 20 students that are currently studying that qualification on a part time basis. So therefore, if there is a business that is looking for um, perhaps a student to work with them, if they could send us through their details and I'll forward it on to the course team. And that OK, listen, that will be great. Thanks for that, Fiona Anderson on the higher level apprenticeship in digital market. And that's interesting. That's interesting to hear. And maybe Tracy, you know, the, this particular business, uh, I don't know the type of the business, but it's a small local business in Armagh. And they're asking for opportunities with mentoring. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking that we could help out there. <laughs> Indeed, Kieran. yes. Um, as I said, when a small business contacts us, you know, we assess what their needs are and we sort of, we, you know, we'd look at who we have in the team, who's best maybe to go and meet with them or virtually meet with them as we are at the moment, but really to, to assess what their needs are. So we would do an audit with the business, see what they're looking to do, what their needs are now, what their needs are in the future, and try and see how we can map that out across the different supports that we can offer. Um, so certainly there is mentoring support and there's skills support. You know, it might be a, a hybrid of both because we've short marketing and digital courses, we've digital tools, we've master classes. There's different things that we can help the business with, both as a short course or as a mentoring provision. And I'm just glad to say that business is, you know, just to highlight in terms of our partnership working very much alongside Nyari Morn and Down Council. We work very closely with ABC Council as well to support the businesses there. Um, obviously, our college spans both council areas um, and um, we work in partnership through different initiatives with both councils to support and reach out and get the word out there because we can't have businesses with all those needs, but both councils also have various support programmes that we refer to each other um, to make sure that the business is, is supported either way. OK, great, because there's a couple of questions here just kind of it relates to this morning's um, this morning's talk, but I, I'd like to share it with everyone here. It's I've recently formed an online store with our boutique. It's not growing as fast as I would have thought. I have boosted posts, added shop online pros all around the store, uh, posts all around the store. I've actively promoted it online. Ideally, I would like an intern to work on this. So can we at Southern Regional College provide an intern for this uh, business, probably around e-commerce or digital marketing? Um, Kieran, if I could just come in there um, and obviously try and answer that. Um, currently, yeah. with our foundation degree students that we have at the moment, there are a number of students there that are in the computing and perhaps the multimedia space sure. um, that would be actively looking for um, projects to currently work on at the moment because obviously their placement element of their program due to COVID is is sort of um it's sort of, sort of limited at the, you know in the current circumstances. So therefore, I mean, if there was something there, we may be able to match them up, you know, potentially with that business. Mm. Um, if it would really depend, we'd probably need to tease out a wee bit more about what it actually. Okay, is. so we'll ask that individual then just to submit their business and we'll endeavour to return to, to get back to them on that yeah. to see if we can help out. There's a couple of interesting ones coming to the fore now as well. And um, uh, I'll take this next one as a local art. Now, this is to the whole panel, so it'll be interesting who wants to who wants to come in on this one. And um, as a local artist, how do you tap into the bigger market? Any advice on not losing your local identity at the same time? That's an interesting one. Who would like to take that? Kieran, I think you might be able to answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You've, Thanks. You've been working with a lot of artists lately. I have been. Uh, I, you know, I have, a, I have a slight idea who this might come with. I, I, I guess, you know, there's a number of things there in, in all types of, I start and then we'll throw it out, you know. Um, uh, no doubt what's happened in the last nine months and prior to with the pandemic, it has changed. And we you hear the words like pivot and flip, and uh, there, th that definitely is quite dominant. But you cannot afford, first of all, to ignore online. So that, that's the first thing. The bigger market, I mean, that's now over the last nine months. And Darren's um, presentation this morning about e-commerce and where, you know, he was talking about when people walk into a shop, 80%, 75 to 80% have a phone. Now, we don't have the actual details of the transactions percentage there, but, you know, if you haven't an online presence to begin with, so when it's most fundamental, obviously trading online is going to be very, very important for any local artist. Then whether that's on a, like a Facebook shop, if they already have, let's say, 20 paintings, they're going to need a, a Facebook shop. And that's the case of uh, they might have they might trade on something like Etsy or they might have some online trading platform, some of which was discussed in this morning's workshop. Uh, and then they're into the whole digital presence and how they do that. 
But to this quest person artist, I would be saying never lose your identity. In fact, that's what is so enticing. What that's what attracts customers is local. Um, and uh, where an artist or a food producer has an association with the local environs, that's the big attraction. So for this artist, it's looking at what you know, I would say they need to be trading online. And I would say then in, in, in later times through my colleague Cahal and, and, and Brian as well, we've been exploring trading online through virtual reality platforms. And we will have a workshop on that coming up. We've already had one. So for a, an artist, you could have a virtual reality gallery and you're still very much your, your, your yourself. But an artist has to be prepared to embrace online is, is my simple answer. And I'm going to throw that to uh, to Giuseppe and then to Sarah as our business representatives here. If you want to add anything to that uh, as, a, as an artist, Giuseppe, how would you tap into the bigger market? I don't know about an artist now, you know, <laughs> food, sell food, make food. Well, I come from a chef background, so uh, I have a real passion for food. So we're just trying to expand our products outside of our area. We're well aware that our brand is strong in the local area, but we're also aware that outside of this area, we're not really that known. So um, we're trying to work on that and trying to grow that. And, and hence, um, we have brought one of our, we've kind of, we've had to shift a lot of our people about within our organization and um, sure. retain staff as much as possible. We have a lot of staff not getting their hours as far as we're making that up. So we're trying to upskill people in different areas. So um, I have one young chap in particular. He's one of our main guys from the restaurant. He's only young, he's enthusiastic. So we have him out here doing sales. He never done sales before. We've never had a sales rep before, but yeah. uh, he's just working. He's using a good app there called Salesforce, which is yes. Uh, yep. And he's reaching out there. Uh, he's contacting different supermarkets as far as Belfast, as far as Dublin, so. And is he doing that through Giuseppe? Uh, people should, I, I am familiar with Salesforce. Uh, I tried to use it about four years ago. Um, a wee bit of learning with it, but certainly it's a very, uh, quite an advanced lead generation conversion uh, platform. And um, does that mean that this individual you've taken on is based from your office in Camlock doing this or is he out visiting clients or is it a bit of both? It, it's a bit of both, but primarily he's, this is, we're only at this now a few weeks and yeah. uh, basically he's built up a real big portfolio where um, we've got a lot of contacts from our distributor. Yep. And he sourced a lot himself, just online, just working away at the office, working online and building up that portfolio. So there's a few steps where he engages with the, um, engages with the potential customer. You don't want to bombard people with 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 the sale thing and emails, etc. So um, he reaches out, introduces himself. The first email, the second email, introduces the product, and um, the third email, he asks them are they interested to want a face to face meeting. So already we have gone round. I've I've gone with him again. I've never done this before. This is all new to me. <laughs> I. I sell in retail products, you know, something I've yes. never done before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Getting out there, arranging to meet people if it suits them in the current climate. But a lot of these supermarkets are all operating and um, everything is more or less the same to them. Okay, there's restrictions in place. So we've met these people engaged, asked for their feedback. So again, we try to promote that we're local and we try to keep that identity that is a family run business. It's still very much, it's very much myself and Fiona are at the helm of this. So. <clears throat> That's, that's. I, th I think what's interesting about that, they're, they're, the way you've described that, <laughs> everybody may be wanting to follow your model there. <laughs> you made it sound really easy. Um, but, uh, and I know it's not uh, kind of from a longer time ago in many jobs that I did, it was sales, sales background a long time ago, and sales is not easy, but it's very different now with, for a number of reasons, the whole sales approach. And yeah. what you've just identified for us there, uh, picking up on this morning's, you you adopt this, uh, what I would call a stepped approach, and Darren was talking about that this morning, and uh, certainly I, I respond to visuals, so from the, the, you said it's stage number three, so if that was colour coded, some way for me that three was a warmer colour, <laughs> as in closer to conversion, um, 
you know, uh, that that's the, that approach that you've adopted by using one of these sales platforms is very, very interesting. Um, I, I'm going to come to Sarah. Thanks for sharing that. That's really interesting. I'm going to come to Sarah. Just back to the question, because I think it's this is Entrepreneurship Week. Um, businesses are turning around. Uh, they are flipping what they're doing. Um, they're pivoting. These words are, are very, very typical over the last six months. But you, you are growing. So what advice would you have for a local artist that wants to get a, a bigger slice? What advice could you give them? I suppose the first bit of advice I'd give to anyone trying to start out or promote their product is to be authentic mm -hmm. and to think about what sets them apart from other people in their sector. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're fish swimming in the one sea, especially if you think of domiciliary care. There's lots of domiciliary care companies. So we have had to identify what sets us apart from our contemporaries and we promote that. So for us, it's about quality and the training that we give and how we look after our staff and we promote that. That's our calling card. That's our drumbeat. And we've used different medias to promote that. We've, we're onto Facebook now. We use Facebook for recruitment. Um, we send little good news messages and good news stories via Facebook. Um, so it's about knowing what you're putting out there, why you're putting it out there, and don't lose track of that and keep the drumbeat of that. Even though you're putting yourself out there, don't lose sight of yourself and, and what you're trying to promote. Yeah, and but I think it's hard. That's a concern it's hard for hard that sometimes, now. Sarah. It when is. you get into that melee of you yes. know, really down that down that tunnel, yeah. it's kind of hard to to to, to do that. So, yeah. like, what? Who reminds you to do that in your business? Who keeps you on track? I keep me on track. <laughs> okay. Um. Look, we we. I suppose from, from the very outset of the organisation, the organisation was started off by Anne um, McQuaid herself, and she started off in the kitchen of her own home um, and um, started off with just a few care workers and it has grown massively. But her ethos, she still sits with us here in the office and her ethos has always been, if you're not going to do it right, don't do it at all. Um, and, you know, that's something that, that we try and instill through our training um, and we keep in touch with all our staff, be it online now through COVID um, or via, we, we send out weekly and, and monthly messages to our staff and we call that the drumbeat. Basically, it's just reminding them um, of, of what it is we stand for and what we hope to promote. I like that. That is a good takeaway for everyone. The drumbeat. That's a, that's, a, that's a nice reminder. I'm going to come quickly then to uh, to Patricia, just in terms of that that question back from the the, the, the the artist. You know, any advice that you would like to share with it? They want to kind of, you know, not lose their local today, but they actually want to grow their business. Patricia. Certainly. Um, well, we, Newry Morn um, and Down District Council, have a program specialist program, which is called the NMD Growth Program. That would yeah. be ideal, um, I think, for this local artist. Um, that program will work with individuals um, in in whatever area they want support in. So whether it be with regard to marketing or whether it be with regard to um, business planning or financial planning, um, really in any area. So that really would be key. That program looks at increasing the competitiveness in, in indigenous markets and as well in, in export markets. Um, there's a number of our support available in that program. There are workshops available through that program. There are thematic programs within that program. Yeah. Um, so certainly she she or he would be welcome to get in contact with NMD Business um, through any of our platforms, Facebook or Twitter or directly. Um, uh, and we, and, and and Patricia, we can share those as part of the uh, uh, the evaluations and the details after this webinar. We'd be happy to, to, share, to share those on. Um, yeah. Ash or Sarah has put forward another question. Does SRC, uh, Tracy, I guess you're going to take this one, but I, I think I know the answer. Does SRC run any networking events for businesses to meet up at present, there are a lot of isolated small business owners. Yeah, OK, thanks, Karen. Well, yes, um, post, oh, sorry, prior to COVID, we run, would have run a number of networking events and it was great to have everyone in the room and sharing and people would meet strangers and then all of a sudden swap business cards and find ways that they could work together and help each other. So they are very effective. Um, yes, we are planning to run a number of webinars over the next few months, but yes, we certainly could look at how we can facilitate a networking event. 
um, and indeed are some of our colleagues in the chambers and the councils. There's a lot of networks and business networks out there. So um, if you need more information on that, we, we can certainly send that to you. There's a lot of support and a lot of networking going on and we, we are also part of that. So the answer to that is yes, we will run networking events and try and bring businesses together. Um, and also sign up to our to our e-sign as well every month. You know, that, there's a lot of good information there, new supports or whatever's out there to help small businesses. We send it out. So if you're interested, please let Ashling or Sarah know and sign up to that. And any suggestions you have, pop them back to us as well. And we're very happy to, to address those. Thanks. Thanks. That's a, that's, a, that's a great answer there, Tracy. And I, I suppose just to uh, elaborate, I suppose slightly on that, certainly we have a programme of winter webinars uh, which certainly to Christmas, Tracy will be online. Uh, perhaps they, they do run, they are planning to run to the end of February. And um, obviously, depending on, on with the pandemic and where we are with everything, there may be the opportunity for certainly one of those to perhaps to be a, 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 a network type event. Um, I should also say that through our partners in Connected have been very good in supporting us down the years through all the six colleges and uh, there may well be an opportunity when it's safe to do so, um, to, to, to run uh, an event around innovation and entrepreneurship. Folks, it's gone, 45 minutes is on my stopwatch, so that's what we kind of was, what we're aiming towards. Um, uh, just in, in a way of, of summary and, and, and thanks. Um, uh, thanks very much, uh, first of all, for, for sharing your stories. Um, Giuseppe, uh, interesting journey and continue to expand. And, and likewise, Sarah, I know you've, your company is really, really, really grown. Um, great to hear, Patricia, of um, working in partnership with the local agencies and we'll continue to do that. And we're, we're very, very pleased to do that. Um, Tracy, uh, as ever, um, leading leading the way in the business engagement, that's so, so important. And, you know, working with um, the college, with Fiona and all the team in terms of the curriculum side of the business and as to how we can help with the, not only train the students, but liaise with businesses where students can come and work either through the apprenticeship model or student placement programs. Great to hear that. So listen, I don't see any more questions. So um, it is Global Entrepreneurship Week. So remember uh, out there, if you have, my advice is if you have an idea, um, jot it down as I was at a workshop learning to draw. Uh, this is the new thing. This is a rough, rough, what I kind of sketched out. I'm learning to draw again. That's so, so rough. Well, I took it from a connected workshop this week. So get it down and, you know, test it, try it, talk to people, certainly at, at our college. We would be delighted to help you. We've loads of uh, six in, in our team of an innovation specialists. Um, Tracy, I'm going to kind of hand back to you just in terms of is anything else you want to say and then we'll close out. OK, um, well, thanks everybody for your time. Thanks to all the panel and um, for taking the time out of your day to join us. I hope that's been useful for everyone. Really, the message is your local college um, is here to support your business and um, we have a range of supports. Please do pick up the phone. Um, and if we can't help you, we're very, we work very closely with our partners in economic development through councils and chambers. And um, we, we know there's a lot of great programs, a lot of great supports. We all are a lot better than what we were years ago at working together and not duplicating what we're doing. So there's no better time to reach out there and look for the support because one of us will have the support that you need. Um, and just to wish Giuseppe and Sarah all the best with their businesses and their growth. And even in the face of COVID, you know, still being able to innovate and diversify and keep going and keep growing so um, and, and do well and I know your sector is particularly busy at the moment um, as well Sarah um, and hopefully you can keep taking in the staff that you need and that we're skilling people up in those, those skills that you need for your business so um, again thanks to everyone and for anyone that doesn't know about us or hasn't signed up to our design or you have all the details now we'd love to hear from you in the future. Great so thank you everyone and uh, well We'll see you all soon back in our next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thanks, Bray. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.